Hello folks, my name's Viv Rolf and uh, a huge thanks to Kim who's invited me to um, put some thoughts together for your session for Open Ed 19 this year. I'm so sorry I can't be there but I'm there in heart and spirit and um, Kim's asked me to think about how OER as a movement is evolving and who's evolving it and some of the work I've done in the past is to look at research publications and citations as a factor of this so I'm going to talk about a bit of that right now um, but I thought what's quite interesting I now work for a herbal tea company I'm not in higher ed anymore and I'm spending a lot of time looking at how plants have been used in the past and thinking about folklore and actually thinking about how for centuries actually what has been the norm is the lovely free transfer of, of knowledge I mean actually if we go over here I can I can point to some examples that are just growing in our bit of scruffy garden here. Um, you know, about 2,000 years ago, so we wouldn't have known this plant in the UK. Uh, it's a stinging nettle, it was brought to us by the Romans. Um, and when they came over, they brought the plant and they, they freely shared the knowledge about it. Um, the dog's now going to eat some. But what, what they used to do is, is pick the plant um, and, and hit themselves on the legs with it. It was good for their circulation and the circulation of marching soldiers it was also believed to be good for like aching joints and arthritis and and this has had a long standing traditional use now in the uk uh for for things like nutritious soups but it's also a diuretic so it's used in spring for cleansing um to flush out the system and all that knowledge was just so abundant and free and i can just sort of point round to other plants I've got growing on this sort of bit of wasteland here. Plantain is a, a great example of, um, you can see by the sort of ribbed leaves there, this is rat's tail plantain. Um, and you take some of the leaves of plantain and make them into a bit of a poultice and they're, they're great for wounds. So I just find it fascinating that we've had this traditional knowledge um, that somehow then becomes valuable, it becomes almost commoditized and um, then the access and transfer of that knowledge instead of being passed down through generations it gets captured in textbooks that then become less accessible to people and you know we have historically then professions built up around the uh, accumulation of this knowledge that then grossly wasn't ac uh, accessible to most people so if we think about the question, how is the open community evolving? One way of looking at that, and that I've done in the past, was look at the um, publications record and citation links within that. So in 2016 for the Open Ed, I did a, uh, a review of the open education literature and looked at connections within it by doing a citation analysis, and I did that manually. And this chart is, is what I compiled as part of that. And what I was surprised to see was a body of literature from the 1960s and 70s that I just hadn't come across before. And also, and people had not referred to, I'd not read about within our sort of modern community of work that was going on. Um, and when I looked further, this was for activities in schools, and it was referring to things like facilitated learning, independent learning, and the whole premise was giving pupils the resources they need to build and direct their own learning. So I thought that was quite interesting um, that our community at that time, a few years ago, hadn't really delved back to look at its history. Katie Jordan in 2018 did a more elaborate piece of work and she compiled a list of papers and looked at the the references within them and the references within them and them again so went through like four iterations to compile a map and when when she did a network analysis of that which you can see here on this chart you can see when she went in and looked at the papers that the papers were different subgroups and different islands within the open movement whether it was MOOCs whether it was the open education in schools, which you can see right down the bottom, or whether it was part of open education resources. So it's quite interesting. She was also finding there were fewer connections between the different facets of open as it was merging. And I suppose to summarise, that could potentially lead to two potential problems. One, we're not reflecting on our past history it might have been interesting to try and understand why the 1970s movement you know withered away 
and it also suggests that um, from the analysis we've both done that we we are creatures of habit and we get quite entrenched in referring to work that we know maybe within our own subject area maybe within our own geographic area and we know this kind of activity can develop knowledge inequalities that Laura Chernovich talked about and we know how citations much become a currency for advancement and promotion and if we're not citing the work of others we're not really helping get in their areas of research off the ground and that further perpetuates the inequalities that we have within our system. So just to summarise some thoughts really, I mean what can we do as an open community to maybe really explore the open flow of knowledge? I know I've very much focused on us as a research community and you're talking about um, other aspects and the fact you're all there in the room at an amazing event is obviously one really important way for drawing the community together. Um, I personally think what is really important to the flow of knowledge is to include conversations and discussions right from the centre of the community out to the periphery. Um, we need to be exploring, you know, what are our differences um, and in so doing, you know, some, solve some of the problems that we face. And I've literally this week come back from a nutrition conference where communications between myself as a person from industry and academia uh, was was very much um, behind a, a barrier and there was such a tension around that and I just don't think that can be healthy for the future of some of the, the big challenges that we face and I think as a community we hold great potential over and above other academic subject areas potentially for you know thinking about a fair and inclusive way of working that really sort of shines the light for future generations.